they fired all us insiders as members of the board of, of the Schwab company. So I want to run through um, a handful of notable moments from your career and that seems to be you know, key moments in the, the growth of Schwab. Uh, the first one being um, it's the early 1980s. Uh, you end up selling the company to uh, Bank of America. I want you to take me to the moment where you're going into a board meeting. You are not only Bank of America's youngest shareholder, or I'm sorry, biggest shareholder, but youngest member of the board by far, and here you are breaking with the CEO. Um, take me into the room, the setting, what you said, and the reaction. The B of A was probably at the time the most recognizable bank really in the country, or in the world for that matter, Bank of America, you can imagine. You can imagine the boardroom was all the way from this wall all the way down to that wall, which is probably <laughs> 100 feet down there. Uh, a board table that was with 27 or 28 people, plus staff around the sides. And we each had in front of us these leather-bound books and so forth. And I'd been on the board for a, a couple of years by that time, like getting somewhat comfortable, really never totally comfortable. Uh, and by that time, the moment you're speaking about is when I made a, put forth the idea that the company needs to do a number of things to get itself back in action again. We'd suffered, the regulators were unhappy with us, we were losing money, we were, our loan loss ratios were going crazy, uh, we were losing loans to different parts of the country and we had to, we had become a more efficient bank. Uh, the bank was probably had twice as many employees per dollar of business than most other banks. But the company had a monopoly in California for a hundred years, not a hundred years, what it was, 50 years anyway. And so it grew into the situation of a lot of excess, uh, people fat and so forth. So I stand up there and go through a litany of things. It took me about 40 minutes. I'd prepared for this for about two months. And, scariest moment oh, in your life. Oh, the scariest moment. Because I, and, and I upset so many people in the room here who agreed with me. And who, who were huge yeah, yeah. names, you know, right? They were huge names. They were chairmen of Transamerica at the time. Chairmen of one guy had just come off the Federal Reserve Board. Another fellow had been Pan American Airlines, that was a big airlines, the biggest at the time. Uh, big department stores, Levi Strauss, all the big names. Well, that particular year was 1986, the one we're speaking about. It was the biggest names in San Francisco and in the country, frankly. And so me, standing up there, going on about this thing, I was right. I was absolutely right. They killed me with their thoughts. <laughs> what did they say? Uh, well, it was sort of tabled and there was a lot of mumbling and then it was sort of the beginning of, of the end, basically. It got into the papers and all this stuff and I was this maverick rabble rouser, blah, blah, blah. And so the regulators, they were really unhappy also. As it turned out, they came a little bit later on in the scene, uh, a few months later. Uh, two months elapsed by and I finally decided I had to resign. I just couldn't stand what was happening here and uh, then began my approach to consider buying the company back. And if I could just go back momentarily, so you're walking into that meeting. D describe the nerves and the, the yips that uh, you developed. I don't want to describe it. It's just it was too painful to do that. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, Still it today? Painful. It was really painful. Oh, my God. Took every ounce of energy I had. W it was what, not, not a happy day. W what I, about it? Today's still painful. Yeah, I would think about it and go through that process, you know, it was painful. To have 27 of these very famous, upstanding people of California, and me taking them on, all on. They all came, they all, it was a fancy place to come. They had great lunches, they had great, you know, the, the compensation for being on the board. I didn't get compensated, that made a difference because I was an inside director. But they were, you know, it was, a, it was an honor to be on that board. I mean, 
you were at the highest level of esteem when you were on that board, on the Bank of America board, let me tell you. And so I got there a different way. <laughs> And uh, it was it was a really a gutsy thing. Uh, and I think you were concerned that they could strip you from actually running well, your did. own company. They, they did. They actually uh, they didn't strip me. They they uh, we were had a board. We they fired all us insiders as members of the board of, of the Schwab company. And so that went on for a few months, and then I began doing what I needed to do, which I describe in the book actually. Yeah.